I wrote a blog this week on KatherineWalden.com where I am talking about, do you see people as a to-do list or do you see them as somebody to love? And I tell the story in that about me when I was in my late teens, I was working as a group home caregiver uh, for children. And right next door to me happened to be another group home run by another organization. But this was a little bit of a different place and I talk about it in the blog. But these were ad adults with disabilities who lived in this home and it was their permanent home. It was their house. They were gonna live there for the rest of their lives. I tell the story of how I was invited one night to come and join them for their weekly welcome the neighborhood party. And so I came and I was loved, I was accepted, and I was cared for. And you know why? Because these people knew that they were respected, they were honored, they were seen as somebody full of dignity and full of uh, a right to be heard. And they had a say in who worked with them. And they were very thorough as an organization to make sure that anybody who came to work with them as a caregiver was not just there for the paycheck. All right, or here's the story behind the story. Why did I write that blog? It was a nice blog. Yeah, it's a good story. And it's one memory that I will cherish forever. But I was the victim at one point where I do not honestly feel that the people involved with this had any evil intentions against me. But I was led to believe that I was seen as a peer and as a needed part. I was in youth with a mission at the time and the base that I was working at was having some financial struggles. As a result, they asked quite a few people to leave the base uh, during a few months period of time. Uh, just within a year after I left the base, the base actually folded for financial reasons. I was left devastated. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know where I was going to go. I was forced to return to a situation that wasn't very good for me personally. And I slipped into a deep depression. And I had a few friends who I reached out to to talk with. Uh, they were not involved with youth with a um, mission. I am forever grateful for these people. And I'm not gonna dish youth with a mission in this either, guys, just so you know. A good friend of mine and her husband were working with youth with a mission in another city. And they asked me if I would join them because they needed help. And they asked me if I would take up one particular job. It ended up being two particular jobs, but I prayed about it and I thought if, if there's any way that God can use me still, I was willing to be, take part. And plus I would be working with a people group who I loved very much from my time in, in Asia, so I hopped on board. I could hardly wait to work with a group of people who were like-minded. I was still dealing with some pretty deep trauma from my past that had nothing to do with my time in Youth With A Mission. A lot of things were surfacing. A lot of was going on within my inner person. Even in my brokenness, I asked God to use me and he did and I was blessed. Well, about a year and a half to two years after I was uh, there, in this new place, the couple who had asked me to come up to help work with them sat down with me and told me that they had a confession to make, that they had invited me to come up here because they felt that I needed help. I still remember the chill that went up and down my spine, and it wasn't a good chill. I felt betrayed, I felt exposed, I felt that I had been lied to, and none of these things were on their heart at all. I know that, but that's what I received in the place that I happened to be emotionally at that time. 
and basically it caused me to step back from the friendship but I couldn't trust them anymore because I didn't know whether they were approaching me as a friend or as somebody they felt that they needed to fix. Yeah, that was unbelievably painful, but I have never, ever forgotten that experience. By the way, my relationship with this couple came to a happy sense of completion and closure. And while I would never consider them close friends anymore, I do love them very much. But getting back to the rest of the story, I learned from that experience and from other experiences i had had before that coming across as Christian Pygmalions. If you've ever saw the movie My Fair Lady, it's based on a play by George Bernard Shaw called Pygmalion, Pygmalion, yeah. And it's basically the story of a professor of linguistics who takes on a bet to see if he can refine what he called a gutter snipe. He saw no value in this precious person uh, into a refined lady. You've seen the musical. I would advise you to read the book or to watch the play. It's so much better than the musical, although I love the musical. Back to the story. The one thing that the professor did right is he told this woman from the very beginning this is what he was going to do. He didn't bring anything into the story that would make her think that he was going to be her lifelong friend, that he was going to be there for the very end. Uh, in the movie, they played up a romance. In the book, that wasn't played as much as it was more of a story about prejudices, learning from each other, and the battle between men and women and the way that we think. But you know, I have ever since my experiences where people have tried to fix me without being honest to tell me what they were really up to, I am so careful now that I am very clear with the boundaries that I set with people who come into my life, especially during ministry. For example, I might be a leader in an e-course. I might um, oversee a Zoom call that meets regularly. Maybe they're in a Facebook group that I monitor. Well, I want to pray for them. I want to be there as far as much as I am able to do. I'm also very careful to not give them any sense of an idea that I am going to be their pastor or that I am going to be their counselor or their mentor unless I am very clear with the role that I feel I am to be in their lives. It will lead to so much less confusion and hurt feelings if people are upfront about such matters. You might be thinking, but you know, Paul, Paul, Paul wrote, I am all things to all people. You're supposed to be there all the time, Cap. What's the problem with you? Read that passage ag again. Paul was talking, read it in context. Remember, I'm all about reading stuff in context. Paul was speaking about his ability to see what the culture was of each culture that he was speaking into. If he was around Romans, he knew how to minister to Romans. He wasn't Jewish to the Roman people. He wasn't denying he was Jewish, but he was relating to them on their level, not compromising the gospel, but customizing it so it would be easily understood by his audience. Paul spoke to the people who worshiped the unknown God. Brilliant, I mean, Paul was a brilliant guy, but he wasn't all things to all people 24 7 and he made sh clear in all of his messages to say that at some point or another and the important thing too is that paul never made himself the center of attention 
whenever he prayed, it was always to God the Father, to Jesus. He always pointed the way back to Jesus. He never allowed people to become solely dependent on him. Did they love Paul? Oh yeah, look at that passage again in Acts where Paul basically told these people that he loved very much, it'd be the last time that they ever saw him. They wept, he wept, but he had to go on to do what he knew God called them to do, which was for him to go on to Rome. And the people that he left behind needed to do what God called them to do. It's again, going back to the very beginning, honor and respect people. Be honest with them. Let them know what your relationship is with them. And if you are sensing people are expecting you to be something that you never intended to be for them, go back and make sure that you set the proper perimeters in that relationship. And if not, do some recalibrating. Set that GPS so you're constantly pointing those people to the only person who will be a constant in their lives from beginning to end, and that is Jesus Christ.